Hello and welcome to my new KSP tutorial. In this video we will be focusing on how to make income in career mode. So I have a pretty basic setup here. Uh, the socket costs 27000 so it's not necessarily expensive. And also I don't have any real special upgrades. I have the second tier of the space center and second tier launch pad. So we can go ahead and launch this. This has six solid rocket boosts that decouple firing these three rockets, which then decouple and fire two rockets up here. Um, until I get fuel conductors, whatever you want to call it, I cannot conduct with these fuel tanks because none of my boosters or my rockets fit perfectly, so it makes it off balance and off kilter, which causes some weird physics uh, issue that makes it flip, so I'm trying to do with that. Now, you may be wondering how to make money off of this, and as you see, I only have pilots right now. However, as soon as I leave this facility, I can go ahead and go to the Mission Control Center. And I can find Ferry 2 for a safety to a destination. So, this guy alone gives me 24, the other guy gives me 24. There's 2, that's one third of what I can carry. Then we can go ahead and get this guy. Which that will give me quite a bit more on top of that. And there's this one. Which, as you can tell, there is either 9,700, 9,700, or, 9, or 19,000. This one is at orbit, and I'm going for orbit, so this is going to be what I'm going to pick. So there's three, and we can go ahead and go back to VAB. Click on this clue tab up here, and then clue these with tourists. And I don't have the rockets necessarily to create more massive tourist things, but... As for now, this will work just fine. So, as always, as soon as we're all in, we're going to enable SAS, throttle up, fire the solid rocket boosters that'll get us relatively high with those thumpers. And so, once we get to, to running out of this, we will fire the next stage. It's pretty basic. Pretty much the orbiting tutorial on with a larger rocket that can carry people and more and materials, of course, because the basic one I made in that first tutorial was pretty much bare bones. Just get your crew pod to orbit, get it out, that's it. So we've pretty much broke the sound barrier by now. I'm not sure what the exact limit is. We're gonna get rid of those, they're gonna drop. Probably hit each other, then I'm gonna start flying off away from the VAB, which is a good thing. Well, the entirety of the space center. So, we're going to try and make this as efficient as possible. So, there's no amount you can get up to about 110 and still have enough fuel to go and get back. And you can actually just throttle back on this and get a more efficient burn. So it's going to bring us up to about 75, 76. So we're going to just activate the engines a tiny bit just to get a little bit more gimbling out of them. And we'll throttle up more once we get to horizon mark. So I'm going to go ahead and start throttling up a little bit more. This doesn't have to be a necessarily stable orbit, as we're going to degrade it almost immediately. This is just simply to get that achievement out of it. And now we're going to burn these at a more efficient burn rate. Which we're going to do about half. Ish. I'm burning a little bit faster about this way. That will probably get us a little bit more distance out of this. So we've already created, or not created, finished one portion of this, which is a suborbital flight. Now we have to get an orbit around Curb, and then we can just immediately deorbit ourselves. 
However, I want to be very efficient and deal with like the exact apoapsis that will leave enough fuel to wipe off some of this velocity on the over entry. Otherwise, you may burn up, and that is not good for the public. The public does not want to hear about you cooking curveballs in your spaceship on the way down. Plus, it's Jebediah. I mean, let's be honest. These guys, who cares? Jebediah, I care. I mean, the only issue would be losing reputation, which I've already gained plenty of just by doing this a few times. This can earn you upwards of 100k, depending on your contracts. He's orbit around Kerbin, telling you about 24k per, so launching 6 uh, after paying off the rocket would be about... 100,000 per. And of course, it'll only get better over time as we go to the Mun, or we create larger passenger craft around Kerbin itself. So we're about to create a very low orbit here. So there's our periapsis showing up finally. And there we go, just like that. We have completed all of these. So just for the sake of efficiency, we're going to go ahead and point ourselves at your grade. Warp forward in time to our apoapsis point, then deorbit ourselves. This is about the most efficient thing I've ever done with this. It doesn't really ever burn me up. It's a little bit nerve wracking from time to time, especially if you enter at a little bit of a higher angle. But it's fine. I'm just going to tap this to about. That's a little bit too steep for my liking. And I can burn you up. I'm just going to turn this around a tiny bit. And that's just a tiny bit above what I would like to have it. I'm just going to very lightly ZX this one more time. And we're going to have a relatively large amount of fuel that we can use to wipe off that remaining velocity. So... That's about nice right there at 47. So let's gonna go ahead and speed up time. This of course doesn't earn you any science. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So we are now starting to enter the atmosphere in a degrading orbit. Of course you could probably do this more efficiently. I'm not the best with the gravity turns, as they usually end up flipping me. But this always works out for me. I prefer a method where I go up, I get to about 50,000, and I immediately turn for the horizon and burn with all my rocket power. Use all the main delta V I would have used to gravity assist in atmosphere. Of course, methods always change with updates. They create new aerodynamic systems, tweak it a little bit, so everything changes a tiny bit over time. So, if you're watching this in the future, they may have changed it a tiny bit, in which case I'll try and release an updated tutorial. Or maybe you can't do this, so I'll release a new version. But for now, this works perfectly fine. I'm gonna turn these crew lights on. Lights. Lights on. Make it look a little bit more lively or something. I don't know. It's gonna already be pretty flaming hot here soon. So here momentarily we should actually be re-entering the atmosphere. So the re-entry effect isn't that bad here up here at 52,000. Very light. Go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Tap off some throttle here and there. And we go ahead and try and burn as much of this off now as I possibly can. However, I am going to keep these two external fuel cells. 
as what they're going to do is they're going to provide a lot more heat coverage for my crew cabin. And then I'll detach these as I fall further. So if you feel at all like you're having an issue, you can quick save or just save normally like that. I believe F5 is quick save, yeah. I'm not used to using the default keybinds as I've keybinded stuff in the past on a lot of games. And mind sure if you can keybind on this game. I don't think we could, that'd make it a lot of sense. But anyways, we are re-entering the atmosphere pretty heavily now. There is no stopping us now. We are going to be touching down probably near the edge of the ocean. Or this little gold here, whatever you want to call it. So we're really speeding up now. We're heating up, not so much speeding up. We're actually slowing down at a slow rate. Once we really hit more atmosphere here soon enough, at the very top of the screen you can see our atmosphere. Once we get down to the lighter sort of aqua blue, is when we're really going to hit hard atmosphere and slow down a lot more. Then once we hit this very light blue, of course we'll be pretty close to land or water by then. And as you can see, we're hitting into atmosphere and we're heating up a lot more. Now on Kerbin, it isn't even near as bad as on Eve. On Eve, you're going to want to have tons of heat shields or ton of, um, tons of fuel just to sort of slow yourself down. Otherwise, you're going to burn up nearly instantly. Like there's no other way that your rockets are going to survive or anything. So we're getting a bit of a rocking motion here now. We're losing a lot of our speed and it's starting to want to change its course of direction. Especially as we're hitting this atmosphere, we're going to start leaning upwards more as it's showing some form of lift. And we've dropped enough speed that I feel safe detaching. Of course they blow up on themselves every time. However, every time my command pod's fine, so I've never found an issue with it. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So to reach 10,000, I'm going to deploy with drag shoots. And these aren't actually fully deployed, but they're going to provide some sort of effect. And they're going to affect the fires for the future. When we're deploying the actual pods. So it's going to speed us up to four times as it's no issue now getting down to the planet. So, 5,000 and we'll deploy those. Those we'll go ahead and deploy. I just went ahead and let that one go first, but... I mean, truly, we can touch down a little bit. Close it down. And all of them are deployed now. We're going to continue following the rest of the way at about 7 meters a second. It's pretty slow, but you don't necessarily want to mess up now of all times. This is the very end of your flight, and it's going to earn you quite a bit of cash, about 100,000 per these VIPs. So this is about the best way, I'd say, to make money in the very early stages. Of course, you can go explore stuff at later stages, but right now, Jeb is only a tier 1, and I prefer to get some more maneuvering stuff before I actually truly go about exploring the solar system anymore. So my next tutorial will be on going to the moon, as you need cash to go to the moon, of course. As it's not going to really be a profitable mission, in my opinion. Except for in the science way. But you can see we're up to 462,000. And that will provide us quite a bit of cash for a moon expedition in the next episode. So that's about 100,000 on that mission. And as a matter of fact, there's a way, I believe, to see previous launches, however, I would not remember for the life of me. Also, another way to make cash is, of course, this. I've never really found much use for, but then again, it's for later stages. I don't really do real oil that often. And then the astronaut complex, of course, is very useful. Is uh, You can now have EVAs on Caribbean, which will help you get a lot more science. Well, actually, that's how it is normally. Now you can actually just EVA wherever and place flags.
So of course I'm just going to go ahead and get that now, just to and also you can have unlimited on next stage. And as for this, there's no need to get it yet, as of course, max port parts unlimited, that's the max level. And as for this, you get another level, and it's going to be unlimited, so we're on level 2. So this will provide us enough for quite a while until we do larger Eve missions. So that was my tutorial on making cash in career mode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you guys can fly them. And let's hope I don't smell any roasting kerbals anytime soon. See you guys later.